But if you don't receive this gift, if you don't receive, if you don't accept it, then uh, no, you can't pass go. You've got to go to the lake of fire because you insisted on wanting to pay your own sin debt. You insisted that, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't have to pay. Well, that, that, that works for right up until the rapture. Then after the rapture, all bets are off. You got to pay for everything you've done, everything you've said. All the every, all the evil thoughts, right? No, I insist on paying my bill. Okay, well, guess what? This is how you have to pay your bill. You have to pay your bill by getting in that lake of fire, and knowing that we wouldn't just walk in there will you know willingly, right? He throws us into the he throws those folks into the lake of fire, cast cast into the lake of fire along with the false prophet and the beast and the antichrist cast in thrown in because you could imagine people would get you know if there was an actual visual you know boundary for this lake you could see people right you know standing outside the boundary because they don't want to pay much as you see people today not wanting to pay for their infractions right People run. People are, they're fugitives right now from, from law because they don't want to pay. People hiding right now because they don't want to pay. And God knows that we would get to that, we would see that lake and we would not even want to go close to it. So he casts for those people who are bound and choose not to receive his gift, who, who refuse to accept the gift of, of salvation. By the blood of God, by the blood of the Lamb, you're cast into that lake of fire. And we, we as saints who are still, who are written in the book of life, see it. Why does he want us to see it? Because again, he is affirming that he is a just and true God. What I said I was going to do, I'm doing it. And here's the proof of it. See it. And so those people who say, I want to pay my own sin debt, well, welcome to the lake of fire. Here's how you pay your sin debt, and you'll be paying that sin debt for eternity. That's how serious God sees our sins. One infraction gets you into that lake of fire for eternity. That's how serious he sees our sin. That's how grave it is to deny God, blaspheme God, go against his laws, any of his laws, all of his laws, one of his laws. One, And it's not a request. We've talked about that a few weeks ago. Right. So. So, yes. OK, if you insist on paying your sin debt, know that when you're when you pay your sin debt, your repayment is by burning continuously. Because remember that torture, that burning is is like you're you know, you're not actually um, you're not actually dissolving. Right. But it's a continual, eternal burning. Just as with the torment from the uh, from the locust with the scorpion stingers for five months the men the people were are being tortured with those stingers and and even and, and and the angel said don't you know they're not to be killed right they don't kill them just torture them for that five months what about sticking your finger into that outlet if you could stand it for five months that's a tremendous amount of torture some of us find it torturous standing in line for five minutes the grocery store waiting in line in the fast food line hundreds of cars some of us see that as torture imagine being in the lake of fire for eternity eternity because you have refused to receive the gift of salvation you've turned your back against the 
only Lamb of God, the true Lamb of God, that could be pure enough, holy enough to make that payment for you. And you refused it. So as the as the folks say today, good luck with that. <laughs> Amen. So I pray that this has been, um, you know, a good explanation of this difference. Now we will be beginning uh, reading Daniel and examining all that Daniel had to say. Uh, in reference to his uh, his vision. And Daniel is such a, again, it's one of those, we talked about prophecy uh, a few weeks ago, and the elements of prophecy. Uh, one in particular being the, uh, the imagery, the, the images or imagery, right? And Daniel is filled with imagery. We will be talking about the different beasts that uh, Daniel describes and correlating them with uh, the nations that may uh, that, that he may have been referring to. We'll be seeing uh, in Zephaniah and Isaiah uh, the description of uh, th the day of the Lord being a year long, uh, just as we talked about it a few moments ago. We'll be looking in Isaiah 34 and 8 Isaiah 63 and 4, Isaiah 61 and 2, Zephaniah 1, 14 and 15, also uh, Isaiah 2, uh, 11 and 12, uh, Zephaniah 1 I said already, but also including verse 7 uh, along with 14 and 15. We will be looking at Malachi 4 and 5. We'll be examining Ezekiel because all of uh, Ezekiel 38, uh, 37, 38, and 39 sort of inter are interlaced again with Daniel uh, and much of what we have already been uh, studying with regards to the end time or the day of the Lord, that day of the Lord. And so we will examine uh, all of Daniel and interlace those other scriptures as are necessary uh, to get an idea of this imagery. Who is Daniel talking about? We'll be comparing scripture to scripture, line against line, in order to uh, do as we have been taught now to collect scriptures that are the witnesses to one another about the truth in the word of God. So I look forward to spending that time with you and we will beginning we'll begin with Daniel um, on next week. So if you have an opportunity to begin reading Daniel, uh, that is where we're going and then I also listed uh, for you uh, the other scriptures that we'll be comparing and, and interlacing uh, to get the full picture. Um, but in particular, if you want to look at uh, uh, specifically the reference about uh, the year and 10 days uh, that I referred to with the tribulation, you can look at Isaiah 34 and 8, Isaiah 63 and 4, Isaiah 61 and 2, and Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 7 and verses 14 through 15. So until then, uh, I hope that you have been blessed by this Bible study. I hope that, that you um, are able to see uh, with more clarity uh, this idea of the end of days and the time that I firmly believe is drawing nigh. I hope that you had an opportunity to listen to uh, the uh, episode last night, uh, Friday, March 5th, because I talked there about how we need to examine ourselves, firmly believing that we would be ready to meet the Lord in the air 
we need to know how do we get ready. We want to make sure that we have addressed any issues. You know, um, how do they say, um, uh, uh, make the list, you know, and check it twice? Or uh, how do you want to, you want to settle your account? So you don't want to, you don't want to have to go to the Lord uh, in on Judgment Day having missed something that you ought to have asked for forgiveness for, right? Or something that you need, that you want to address. You want to deal with that now. Go to him now. The Lord Jesus Christ is sitting at his right hand and he's interceding for you. Well, if you don't ask him to intercede, if you don't ask him to go to the Father and, and, and receive that forgiveness, you know, accept that gift, then you've got some loose ends, right? You've got some, some business to still take care of when you, when you get to the, the judgment, right? You, you, you want to be able to have him stamp your hand or, you know, give you that ticket and you just go right on through, right? You don't want to be delayed at the gate so to speak, right? <laughs> you know what a hassle that is when you go to the airport, right? And you, if you haven't gotten everything in place, you're delayed at that gate and, you know, they're looking over everything and then, you know, it could be a nightmare, right? You don't want that. You want to be able to just sail right, go, go right on through, go right on through, right? You don't want there to be any questions, any lingering issues that you need to settle. So we talk about all of these things uh, we did some last night and we talk about all of these things as we're studying because the importance is not uh, trying to uh, determine an exact date. We know that that is fruitless. The Lord said no one will know the exact day or the hour. Uh, but what we what what's it really important is that we are ready. Our, do do our lamps do our oil lamps still have oil in them? Or will we have to run back, see, standing at that gate, will we, will we have to run back and go get some more oil like those five unwise version, virgins? Will our oil lamps be ready? Will we be full of the Holy Spirit? Remembering we talked about, and I mentioned it again last night, if you're removing any demonic forces, any in sin influence from your life, you then have to fill it up with the holy influences. So if you have an empty lamp, you must fill it up with the Holy Spirit, the oil of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, in other words, of the Holy Spirit. And so to do that, we have to identify what are those things that we need to move out so that we can put in the oil of the Holy Spirit. Much as a, a glass of milk, if you, if you have a full glass of milk sitting on a table and you want to put some water in, in that glass, you have to first empty the milk out and fill it with the water. Otherwise, you have a big mess on the table. A big mess. We don't want our lives to be a big mess. So empty out the stuff that is not of God and fill up your lamp, your body, your soul, your mind. Fill it up with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Anoint yourself with the Holy Spirit by reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God, praying without ceasing. And correcting those areas, removing anything that is not of him and not pleasing to him. Because when you get to the gate, you want to be able to walk right through. No problem. No mess. Amen. Amen and amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. May God make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Shalom.